You see, for me, leadership is about cultural architecture. I know you're all familiar with that term, but I believe leaders are, above all else, cultural architects. That is to say, they, they articulate vision, they map out strategy, they marshal activity to create an environment where people flourish and projects fly. That's what good leaders do. Leaders are people who can create a milieu, uh, an atmosphere in the workplace in which people feel confident in their own ability to innovate and solve previously intractable problems. And if you think about all the great leaders who are shaping the cultural conversation globally today, be it in politics or economics or the arts or academia or in business, not one of them is in effect a Luddite living in the past, in love with the past, simply referencing the past. Not one of them is an existentialist, merely living in the present and celebrating present market share. Every leader of any influence today in any sphere or sector of society is a futurist, not in the professional sense, but in the way they think. They are engaging the future now. And I think that's the key to success in any field. Success, growth, market expansion does not come from how well we celebrate past glories or manage where we are at present. Kodak found that out recently the hard way. You remember Kodak? We barely remember Kodak today. But Kodak had, in the mid-90s, one of the first consumer-ready uh, digital cameras, but refused to allow its marketing department to put any money or weight behind it because it didn't want to threaten its venerated film division. And so it gave up market share to its competitors, and today Kodak has basically gone the way of the dinosaur. This once great company reduced to rubble, in effect, because it wasn't willing to do this most basic of leadership tasks, which is to engage the future now. Only 3%, or well, sorry, most CEOs spend less than 3% of their daily time in thinking about the future. And yet it is the key to growth in influence. 